If you know a few simple rules to let your queries find the correct records, your life with access will be much easier. So let us discuss some of those rules. I have here a very simple database. If you want to know what is in the background, these are the relationships. And I'm using from all of that just one simple query that finds in September 1994 all the stores from that have a specific sales representative. So I'm going to the other side of the screen as I call it. You either do that through view, design view, or in the right lower corner click on the design view. I'm just using one table in this case the store name, the sales rep, and I determined in criteria that that should be this abbreviation. And then in the contract date, I put what they call a like statement. A like statement are always needed when you want a variable that is not specified, the asterisk. That means it will find everything in 1994, month 9, any kind of date. That's what the asterisk does. If you do use an asterisk, you need a like statement. Sometimes it will automatically kick in, but not always. So now when I go back to the other view, it will just give me those dates. Later on I will improve this query. This is still a very primitive one. The second one shows me all store names in the northeast and the northwest. Um, just to make sure that you realize you want northeast and northwest, but in your criteria range, that should be northeast or northwest. You probably knew that, but if not, then you will be in trouble. So that is a very simple query too. Let's go to a better one. This is a more complicated one. I want to find all stores that have no orders sometimes in a certain period of time, or just in general. That, that looks like a very simple one, but it's not as simple as you think. Let me show you. We, we need two tables, customers and orders. I take the store name from the customers table, and the order number of the orders name. And I'm going to say here is null in the criteria. That means no orders hooked up to that store. If you don't do anything else, you will not get what you want. Why not? Because in a query, you sometimes want to change the connection between the two tables. That connection is called a join. And I'm right-clicking there, and I want the join properties. By default, it only includes rows where the join fields from both tables are equal. But there is no equivalent in the other table, so you want all customers and only the orders where the joint fields are equal. Sometimes you want all orders. In this case it's definitely this one. And when you do that, then you will see that little arrow here. And this one will always give me all the stores that do not have a order number. The next one. Again, a simple one. These stores ordered a product called tent at a certain quantity. So the query is basically simple, but you probably want to also find out how much did they order in total. So here we have the background, store name, then the product description, tent, and then the quantity with a line item. Be before we are going to sum everything together, I can replace this with a parameter. So I'm going to zoom in here, then it's easier to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to say I want like, and then I ask a question in the parameter, bracket, which product? And if someone just types TE and you want that to be 10th, then you hook onto it 
that famous asterisk that takes everything else. So whatever the last part is, if it starts with TE or TEN, it will do the job. So now when I go to the other side, when I run the query, it asks you which product, and I can just type TE. And it will give me all the TE items that were bought. If you do it more explici explicitly, and you say I want really tent, then it will only give you the tent ones. I also want you to realize that if you type nothing in that parameter box, which only kicks in when you run it or when you go to the other side, if I type nothing in there, I get everything. Now we are going to say I want for tent the grand total. So we are going to make this what they call a total query. You do that by clicking on the totals button. And when you do that, you get a new row here that shows everything inside here for each field. Group by store name. Group, group by product items. And then for quantity, you want to sum. When you run this one, and I'm going to do 10 again, then I get all of this. So why did I not get the grand total? Because I am grouping by store name. If you don't want that, because you want the grand total for 10, then you have to make sure that the store name is taken out of the query. And I do 10 again. And it tells me we had 22 in total. Another rule for this kind of queries. Then the next one asks which product do you want, which year, and I get everything. What is in the background? Parameters, of course. The first parameter is under product description, and that is clear now what that should be. That asks the question which product. It gets a little fancier in the next one, order date, we zoom in again, in the order date, I made the query a little different. I used the parameter which year, but the year is always at the end of a date, at least in my setup. If you want that differently, then you have to put it at the beginning, but it doesn't matter how it starts. So you put your asterisk first. And because you have an asterisk, you need a like statement, space, ampersand, space, and then the question which year. So now I can run this one and say I want any product, but only in the year 1995. And all my order dates are in 1995. In the next one, we are going to say which month in 1994. Let's say September, month 9, and we get all the September issues. If you want to do this with a parameter, and that's what we did, you have to make sure that your parameter is properly formatted. Like, the month is in my database at the beginning of the date. If you use the European or Asian system, you may want it in the middle. Which month, space, ampersand, space, and then asterisk. You may want to make sure that you put a forward slash there. For otherwise, if you say which month in 1994 and you do 1, then you will also get 10, 11, and 12, but they start with a 1. In this case, you prevent that. So now when I run the query, and I say I want all the January ones, then I get all the January ones in 1994. And finally the last one, which is a strange one maybe. Uh, sometimes I want only the USA, and sometimes I want only all the other countries except the USA. If I keep both of them empty, it will not work, but let's say I want only the USA. The next one I type nothing to skip all the others and I get only USA records. Had I done it for the second one, 
nothing for the first one but for the second one USA I have everything except the USA and if you want all the countries then you have to type USA twice USA to get the USA and also to skip the USA so I get USA and all the other countries how did we implement that one? it's probably not something you would be aware of so we zoom in so we ask first for USA type USA or and then you can say I want everything except the USA so instead of this one you can also type the NOT keyword not type USA so it's an OR condition that means if I type USA in the first parameter and I type USA in the second parameter I get all countries otherwise you have a choice to either USA or not USA these are just a few simple rules important for you to know there are many more of course but you can combine them now you have enough knowledge I think to do all of this